You're listening to Aussie's Radio Half Hour. Here is your host, Aussie. G'day trendsetters, this is another special edition of Aussie's Radio Half Hour, it's the Jobs 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 edition, and uh, that was um, Old 55 with Frankie J Holden, get a job. Now, uh, we've got a lot of lot to cover tonight, uh, I'm just uh, thinking, <laughs> what, what have I done in the last month? Well, I've done, I've done quite a lot. I uh, went and visited my local MP uh, at Melton. I can't remember what date it was, but you can uh, refer back to my channel. Uh, it should be on there. It was in my uh, Aussie Aussies exclusives on uh, Odyssey. Now, um, what I should have done, I should have introduced that first up, but why don't we um, kick right into it and I'll introduce my new uh, sub channel. Uh, it's on Odyssey. It's called Aussie's Odyssey Exclusive. Now, I have added a link to my Odyssey channel on all my videos, and uh, this one's no exception either. So I've added on my main description on the channel a link to Odyssey and um, what you can look out for with these uh, Aussie uh, Odyssey exclusives. Um, specifically just for Odyssey because uh, we all know that YouTube uh, are a bit of a bastard and they, they do like to uh, censor so um, a lot of my videos that are too hot for uh, YouTube go to Odyssey or you know even if they're they're not quite videos, they're really just undercover pocket videos. Uh, a lot of people would get really peeved if I was to say that I would be filming them. And um, it wouldn't have the same effects and I don't really want the authorities after me just yet. So I'd rather not be, you know, getting myself into trouble and, and uh, having uh, my... Uh, you know, rights taken from me and violence put to, on towards me. So, uh, if it was a better, better time and a better place, for sure, I would, I would film. And uh, you know, we do have every right to film, but unfortunately, uh, being a communist, socialist uh, dictatorship in Victoria or Australia, that isn't the case. Um, and yeah, so I, what I've been doing is. I, I did uh, interview my local MP about uh, the lack of support for unjuiced workers who have lost their jobs over the mandates and are only now trying to find meaningful work. Uh, Victoria has since dropped the mandates for the you know what and um, but the problem is that the government has given authority to uh, to individual workplaces to to dictate whatever um, mandates that they want to put forth. So uh, it is a bit difficult for uh, employee and employer to get around what is what is real and what is true. Um, you know and. Uh, Lately, I've had to school a lot of a lot of people in saying that this isn't um, this isn't true. It isn't what it is. You don't have to get it. Um, you, 
it doesn't have to be enforced either. So, um, and I've I've had to literally arm wrestle with with a lot of people on this subject. So, and it is a very concerning issue because a lot of people are desperate to, uh, to work, and a lot of people are desperate for workers. So, um, you know, and I, I have had discussions with um, some local. And employee employers that were looking to employ people, and uh, I've literally tried to, um, you know, talk them out of what they were doing. Um, unfortunately, a lot of uh, businesses inside shopping malls and shopping centres are dictated by what the private company that is an umbrella towards them that provides the service for them to work at, um, they've become dictator. So they've allowed private corporations to become dictator. Uh, that's unacceptable. And I think it's our duty to remind everyone, not just employers and employees, but everyone that this is unacceptable behavior and it must be stopped. So. It is my duty to do that, and I have been doing that for at least since I can remember, saying to people that this isn't right. I encourage everyone that is listening to this podcast to do the same. If you are in Victoria, Australia, Melbourne, or if you are in any other parts of the state, uh, or the states of Australia, um, or any other state, any other part of the world uh, to do the same push back, fight back see if you can find a legal remedy out of this uh, and if you feel discriminated uh, take it up with the courts at least put a um, a submission into VCAT if you're in Victoria I don't know what it is for every, any other state but your local court so put a submission through your local court and uh, sit tight and wait is my suggestion at least you've got that recorded it's on a computer system it, that information has been recorded you get a copy of that information and uh, yeah all you do is wait so yeah I just I, I totally encourage people to do that because uh, people are, are, are desperate for workers um, but also people are desperate to work. Um, I must admit in my situation at least um, I do have um, a pension, I want a disability pension uh, so ideally I'd like something maybe casual to part time um, for some permanent work unfortunately not full time uh, because of what my disability is but um, you know, I'm just reaching out, out there. If there's anyone out in the western suburbs of Melbourne that is uh, wants a a keen worker, I'm I'm, uh, I'm 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 raring to go. So yeah, um, look, I, I even went to uh, a jobs fair in uh, Woodgrove Shopping Centre in Melbourne. Uh, they had pretty much just. I think it was a knee-jerk reaction. I, I honestly think it was a knee-jerk reaction by uh, the MP that's in Melton. I'm not going to name names, but I think it was a knee-jerk reaction by me going to his office. But at the same time, I kind of think that they were going to do it anyway. But it was just to, you know, further add salt to the wound. Um, and just like it was it was hopeless the whole thing was like who would want a job at bras and things this is what I'm saying they, they had <coughs> they had jobs at bras and things right and retail I was only gonna apply for a job at, bra, at bras and things I was gonna say okay <laughs> let's go I'll send him a resume and apply for a job at bras and things I couldn't be bothered because you had to register through the jobs network there and I think you had the QR code or do something along those lines of either registering online or either with the QR code or something right 
and um, I did on the first day there I did um, have some sort of an interview with the council and another job centre there Jerawara job centre which I already had liaised with uh, unfortunately due to my uh, situation I'm unable to use their services but um, a lot of their jobs anyway you, you do you need you need the uh, the juice to, to get the job no jab no job so and that's the same with the council uh, and that's the same with any form of uh, health and mental health work that's going there so um, it is really tight it is really tight at the moment um, I was told by one of the, the ladies there uh, through the job centre there that I'll I'd be better off waiting until next year but it's like well how long do I need to wait you know how long how long does one need to wait and you know like they, these people don't even think that I've been discriminated against you know what I mean and uh there's there's no recourse as well if you try and take these to the courts these cases to the courts they're really gonna slow everything down um, in fact I've had a court case that I started last year and it's still ongoing so uh, it could take months it could take years and I'm, I'm guessing it's gonna take some time years um, unfortunately uh, to, to find some sort of a resolution uh, so yeah uh, so much to talk about so much to say uh, it's just it's really crazy how they're trying to push everything forward there's new uh, variants there's a tomato pox there's monkey pox there's <laughs> the list goes on elephant pox uh, and they really want to drive this thing home uh, so look, I do have I do have some sort of a black backup plan. I do I do have a trade background. I could get back into by myself if um, if I did apply myself a bit more. I know I can do it. Uh, I just I just need the space as well. It is a bit tight. Um, and look. You know, I can, I, I could possibly work from home, you know, like everyone else seems to be working from home, so why not? Um, if I was to start a, a job here, I would, you know, I wouldn't, uh, I would advise myself or even others maybe to try and do some trading, like barter trading for services and goods at the moment. Try not to use the cash system. Um, see if you can find a way to better yourself, learn a bit of more about our financial system, um, the Federal Reserve uh, and cryptos especially because uh, cryptos are going to be somewhat um, the future, whether we like it or not, um, it may be a way to kind of weave yourself out of uh, the CBDC, uh, you know, currency that they want to unleash out onto the world. So it means that it won't be backed by gold or silver. It'll just be like cash but thin air, but it will just be a digital dollar. So I think there'll still be cash, but it might be a, a rare thing. You know, I think people might, um, you know, look, look at how many people took the jabs you know from what I've heard in the statistics it was 80 to 90 percent so we have a long way to go I think the, the world is waking up a little bit more now but um, unfortunately look I just want to I just want a job even even a, um, a volunteer job I, I did inquire about volunteering at uh, St. Vincent's and uh, I think there was another uh, shop similar and I asked uh, both of them uh, it was like a charity st charity st uh, store 
and uh, both both required a, a you know what to to uh, work there as a volunteer and I just said no way thanks and see you later uh, there was one gentleman that was nice enough to possibly offer me some work uh, teaching people how to play guitar so guitar lessons for young young school children but I'd have to get a uh, working with children's check so that is that is in my in my mind I did keep his card I did um, I said to him I you know keep my name on file and my number and I'll I'll get back to you when I can but it's just the motivation you know um, I did speak to this gentleman and he and I did have a, a chat to him about look you know with the the whole mandate stuff and he was a bit more relaxed about having someone that was unjuiced working there and I told him look I can't wear a mask he was okay with that so look you know that say that sounds to me like a very good supporting work environment but at the same time because I've been out of work for such a long time it just um, I, it will take me a long time to get used to and I honestly don't think uh, you know like someone will have to be a saint to hire me I think that there, there is a you know they they're gonna have to have a lot of patience I think because I've been out of the workforce for so long um, it's gonna be a, a lot harder now um, for me to to get back into it but look um you know i've been learning about other things uh i've been reading i've been uh learning how to propagate seeds uh i'm, I'm trying to grow my own veggie garden um shout out to rock no reloaded he's got a channel on here i think he's uh there's a channel called green thumbs if you guys want to get onto that he shows you a bit around the garden and uh, his chooks and his, uh, his wonderful veggie garden so you know just to be a bit more sustainable so yeah I'm, I'm doing that I'm, I'm reading a lot of books and uh, getting enough knowledge as I possibly can but um, I'm just waiting uh, I think maybe maybe that's the the best thing maybe maybe I'm better off waiting um, you know I've been in contact with a few people that were willing to take someone on that wasn't un, you know that wasn't um, juiced and um, you know but they needed someone a bit more um, skilled I'll give you an example there was a guy that was um, that he makes. Uh, I think he makes cakes or pastitsis or something pastitsis, and he needed one a guy that a chef that could make them, like in a factory. And I inquired about the job, and he said that I don't need the the you know what, and the, he didn't he didn't really care too much about the mandates, but he wanted someone that knew how to make stitzy from scratch so the pastry and the the cheese or the filling you know or the meat filling he needed someone to do that so I said look keep my number let me know if things come up because he wanted to hire someone that was professional and he was fine um, there was even another guy I, I walked into their shop the other day an Indian restaurant and I and he needed a chef and I said look I'm not a qualified chef but I do know how to cook um, but he wanted someone qualified and he wanted someone that was juiced as well and I did explain to him that look you know do you know that under the current regulations you don't have to you know force that anymore and he was trying to explain to me oh yeah you know, this is the way it is and rah 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 and I said no like I think I kind of swayed him in a way, he go at the end of it. He goes, "Oh, they don't have to be, but you know, we we like them to be, but in the end, they don't have to be." So it's 
it's really confusing, you know. And I think a lot of the um, employers are really uh, confused as well. I I actually um, convinced an employer that was advertising on Facebook. Um, I think it was a mechanic workshop, and uh, I said I, I said them something about the international human rights charter or something something international international treaty international law or something and that's supposed to override our constitution and that's where we get partially our constitution from anyway you know um, your your medical rights cannot be impeded you can't be forced to a medical conscription yada 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 so I sent that to them and they came back to me and they said, oh, thanks for the information, we've read it, and uh, we're open to anyone now. They don't have to be juiced. So I'm like, wow, you know, I almost fell off my chair. I'm like, wow, you guys are getting it, finally. At least at least one employer is getting it. So I was, I was, uh, uh, I don't know what I, I was, I was chuffed, but, it, you know, it didn't mean that I had the job, you know, it was full time, I think it was for an apprentice, they wanted an apprentice there, so I've already done my trade, but it w I wouldn't mind going back into it and learning again, <laughs> that's for sure, because uh, I, I still need to uh, brush up on my skills, but uh, yeah, um, they finally, they finally got it, you know, and they were willing I think they're going to bend soon. I think what what's going to happen is that there's going to be a lot of people that are going to be too sick to go to work because they've been juiced, and uh, they're going to uh, be sick for a long time, and then they're going to have to, we're going to have to replace them um, with new workers, i.e., us that you know lost their jobs due to the mandates, but. I kind of think that they may, you know, I've, you know, I've been told a lot of crazy stuff that could happen. Like uh, a good friend of mine was telling me that they could just use uh, robots and uh, blockchain. So robots and blockchain, you know. Now there's a thought, but. Do they really have the robots to replace us at this point in time? You know that that will be some sort of a revelation, wouldn't it? That you know no one's going to be working, everyone's going to be sick, staying at home under lockdown, and there's just going to be robo th everything, robo everything. So there's there's really no point at the moment in upskilling as well look I was thinking of getting a truck license I was thinking of getting uh, you know just doing something else but uh, with with what's going on at the moment no I don't I don't think I think just staying staying put and laying low is probably the best thing to do at the moment at least I've got a little bit of income coming through but it's just it's boredom what it is it's boredom and it's cabin fever that's what I'm getting I'm getting cabin fever I just want to go out and work you know even if I'm working with a bunch of uh, socialist communists that are, are just Stasis and and they're, they're little dictators look I don't care right I'll tell them where to go if they tell me you know, to put on a bloody mask or whatever I'm not I'm not putting on one of those stupid things anymore and I'm not I'm not getting uh, juiced as well so they can go and walk this is the whole thing people have to stand their ground they have to stand up uh, there's no point in, in moving into state either unless you're really desperate uh, if you can stick it out stay where you are this is my advice stay where you are because moving is going to cost you money you know you think about it if you you know, move out of the, the state or the country and, and even moving out of the country is pretty hard now, especially if you're unjuiced um, or even going on holidays. That's another story for another time, but even 
heading into state to start fresh. Look, a lot of people are doing it. I don't judge you for for heading north to New South Wales or Queensland or out bush. Um, a lot of people, a lot of people are going up to Queensland uh, because the mandates are a bit less restrictive there. But all in all, it's the same everywhere. Um, unless you're really desperate, yeah, why not go to Queensland? See what you can find up there. But I'm, I'm, I want to stay here because I have my my friends and my family here, and I I, I find it hard to leave. I've you know I can't I can't sell my house because I'm still paying it off. Um, I have bills and rates and mortgage just like the rest of everyone else um, and it would cost me to move you got to think of that too yeah I can sell everything and get what get some money for it and then just buy a van and uh, travel around Australia in a van but I'd like to do that in when I retire why, why do, should I do it now you know and a lot of people say this is the great resignation um, that there it is I do agree with it however uh, with this great resignation I, I think uh, there's going to be a lot of jobs coming out of it I hope I really hope that there's going to be some sort of jobs come out of this crisis that we're able to uh, you know to, to have uh, stability you know because at the moment there's no stability uh, yeah, I went to the jobs fair. All they had was just really rubbish jobs, uh, corporate jobs. You needed a degree. I don't have a university degree, and I couldn't be bothered applying for a job. But uh, you know, I did check with. Uh, I think it was a sporting goods shop. Um, they sold shoes or something. I think it was sports car or something, and they needed the jab for you to work there. So there's no point. Another thing too, uh, there was a job opening at, at bras and things. I think the closest one was Baker, Baker's Delight that I probably would have been close to being eligible for. The other ones were just uh, clothing stores. And you know what clothing, sto clothing stores usually hire? They never hire men. It's usually If, if they're going to hire men, it's usually gay men. Gay camp men work at clothing stores or suits stores you never see a straight man working there you'd have to travel back in the 90s or the 80s for to see that stuff so um, unfortunately these days there's just women working in, in these retail jobs and when you when you see them working there uh, it, it, they don't even look like they want to be there you know and this has been going on for for a long time that that these women don't want to they don't want to. They feel out of place in the workforce. Look, call me a, a misogynist or a sexist pig, but I think the, the place for a woman, generally speaking, is in the home as a homemaker, looking after the kids, cooking, cleaning, and looking after hubby after a, after he's had a nice, you know, a, a long hard day at work. He lo he wants to come home to a clean house and, and cook dinner and well behaved kids you know uh, and I think that's what society has forgotten today um, unfortunately so um, yeah I'm just trying to keep my head above water looking out for any job opportunity there is I I'm pretty sure they're going to have to stop what's uh, coming anyway with uh, these these stupid mandates, I think uh, what what's I, I think there's going to be a straw that's going to break the camel's back on here. Uh, they they're not going to get their workers. They're either going to have to get them from overseas, and um, who knows? They like with the things that are happening with air travel and um, you know. Uh, 
cruise ships and you know uh, cruise ships going broke I did see a video that something fell off a plane I think it was almost half an engine that fell off a plane in a, I think it was in America or something so maintenance isn't getting done on, properly on these planes um, you're going to find that there's probably going to be a fuel and oil shortage so most likely these planes aren't really going to get off the ground so they eventually they're going to have to let the unjabbed go back to work just to keep the economy alive um, and if they don't then it's either we're going to go to World War 3 with uh, Russia or Ukraine or whatever or you know there's going to be some fake staged conflict um, I think the Russia and uh, Ukraine thing was a, was a bit of a laugh but it won't, wouldn't surprise me if they still try and push war because war makes money um, and we're better off uh, you know we're, the Weffers are pretty much uh, better off having us dead it's uh, it, it costs them too much money to keep us alive here that's why they want to get rid of us so look without further ado I'm going to I'm going to leave it there uh, thank you for listening uh, this has been Ozzy signing out and uh, if I didn't mention the date today is the 24th of August 2022 so I will be back next month uh, most likely you know around the end of the month I usually do podcasts every month so the 24th or the 25th of next month look out for PK he's doing a uh, show every month get on to his uh, Patreon uh, I think he's going to have a catch up soon at uh, one of the pubs in the city uh, usually it's the Young and Jackson but we'll keep you posted so uh, with that I'll bid you good night and thank you very much and uh, like subscribe comment share get the word out thank you Aussie out